you are listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. I'm Elena Paventa, Executive Communication Coach and TEDx Organizer. With each episode, I'll share with you communication tips and ideas from top business leaders to help you excel in your career. Today, my guest is Beata Vandachowicz Krasoń. She's the Director of Procurement Risk Management at Philips. She's working in Netherlands. Originally, she's Polish and uh, she was living in Łódź in Poland, in the city where I lived for many years also. She's very active in business and uh, in the nonprofit world. She's running a lot, a lot of projects and she's an amazing leader. Uh, and she will share her leadership tips with us today. So hi, Beata, it's great to have you on the podcast. Hi, Elena, thank you for having me here. So, uh, Beata, can you please tell us about your leadership journey? I'm a director of procurement risk management in Philips, a leading health technology company. Um, I was working uh, in Philips in Poland uh, as a line manager um, when Philips started Transactional Shared Service Center. Uh, I remember I was one of the first 30 people hired in the organization and then within three years we grew to more than 1,000 people. So it was a just incredible journey. Um, I worked there seven years in total and then I moved uh, to the Netherlands. Um, right now I'm leading procurement uh, risk management um, and I transformed the program um, basically to start a totally different way of working in the way we manage supply related risk and crisis. Um, for my program, we received uh, procurement and supplier quality uh, excellence awards. And wow, right now- congratulations. Short- Thank you. And I'm also shortlisted for uh, world procurement awards in risk oh. management category. So we are waiting for results. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> Um, before this, I was working in finance. I was leading one of the major programs in supply chain finance, uh, connecting banking world, our treasury department, suppliers, and of course our corporate, um, with a lot of, uh, teams that were engaged. Uh, that was about 2 billion euro program, um, delivering early cash solutions for our suppliers. And we improved uh, basically liquidity by more than 400 million uh, euro to our suppliers, more than 160 million for our organization. Um, And this is when I started to work with supply chain finance network, um, with other companies, with supply chain finance consortium. Uh, And I was also invited uh, as one of the key speakers many times uh, to the conference. Um, I was also invited to be a judge in in, uh, inaugural um, Supply Chain Finance Awards uh, when we started with Supply Chain Finance Awards uh, with multiple corporates um, uh, competing basically for those awards. So that was a great recognition as well for me. Um, So in those 16 years of my experience, I was working and even in multinational environment, I played roles in as a specialist and a leader. I was working in multiple departments and led multidisciplinary teams. Um, so both in Poland and in the Netherlands. So I think there's a lot of multi in that sentence, but I think that also shows my experience and I'm happy to share this with you. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of achievements. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, um, what is, in your opinion, having in mind everything you went through as, as a team leader, as, um, as a leader in, in a multinational organization, what, uh, in your opinion, is the most important in leadership, uh, especially when we talk about young team leaders who just uh, became team leaders and they don't know what to do. Maybe they want to do something, but they don't know how to start, where to start. So what is the most important in your opinion? Now, that's a great question. I think leadership is not about power. Uh, It's about influence and impact. And great leaders don't set themselves out to become leaders. 
but they set themselves out to make a difference and an impact. Uh, and they are also great role models when it comes to courage. So I think w if you ask me what's most important of being a leader, I think it's about courage. Um, any step in our careers and lives, just we get inspired by people who are courageous, eh? who pick up a challenge and just they go for it. And it can be a huge, spectacular, but it can be also a very simple act. Um, and being courageous is not acting, is not actually having no fear. It's acting despite the fear. And fear is a limiting factor. It can be very isolating. Uh, it puts you in a lot of doubts um, and it can build mental blocks. I think ultimately it can lead to a lot of frustrations. And I think it's so important, especially right now, given the context that we are in uh, with COVID-19, with the whole pandemic that is going on around us, where you see the highest unemployment rates uh, in multiple countries. Um, you, you see, we saw the highest unemployment rate in America in, uh, back in April, I think it was 14%. Now it's a bit down. Uh, we see rising unemployment rates here in the Netherlands. Um, we also see the highest number of commercial bankruptcies. Uh, I think like recent quarter showed 30% increase um, compared to last year. Now, those are the terrifying numbers. And I think this combined with securing safety and health of us and our families I think that just raises a lot of fears and a lot of concerns for many people. So especially acting in terms of crisis, we have to practice courage yeah. and acting despite fear. Uh, so I think this is uh, definitely number one for me. Yeah, yeah. So uh, being courageous is for sure, for sure very important. Um, and uh, what helped you in your leadership journey to get where you are so which um, qualities uh, how uh, how did you do it <laughs> uh yeah so if you look at my life and my career i've always i've been always thinking in terms of possibilities and potential um an impact i can make on others i think when i was asked by one of my coaches um that was basically the first thing that came to my mind, how I can make a bigger impact and uh, make it successful. Um, and I'm ambitious. Eh? I'm always the one that makes, wants to make that next move and wants to uh, reach that next level. But a few elements definitely helped me grow so far. And, and the first is getting out of the comfort zone. Um, I think it's so important and it can resonate with so many, especially right now, when you have to look for new ways maybe of job search or new ways of sustaining in the organization or new ways of contributing to customers. So I think that's really something that we should not be afraid of. It's, you, we need to really go for that and open up. Just to give you one of the examples, because I had many of those in my experience, um, when back in 2010, I got qualified to a high potential program at Philips. Um, it was quite a rigid process uh, to select and qualify people to high potential program. I had interviews with five senior leaders and they were totally different people with different leadership uh, and managing skills and styles. And the principle was that they had to all agree that I can qualify. Otherwise, if any of those would be a negative, it would be a no-go. Um, so I actually got through that process and the feedback I received was hey, if I wanted to grow, I had to consider moving out of the country. Um, the organization at that moment was pretty flat, so I didn't have chances for further growth. It was really like hitting that ceiling that you just can't go up anymore. Um, but it was tough. I was 30. I had two and a half year old son and a husband uh, working full time. Um, we just renovated the apartment. So, you know, if you look at my life moment, 
I was like, is this really the good moment for me to make that move and make that step? But I decided to try. And within a couple of weeks, actually, since I started uh, searching, I got five job offers. So I was in that privileged position that I could basically make a choice. And I chose for the position that I love, loved most and the manager that resonated with me. Yeah, and I decided to make that move and make that step and move to uh, the Netherlands. But it seemed like life was testing me because <laughs> um, my manager stayed only for three months and then he moved away from the organization. He got once in a lifetime, beautiful offer abroad. So he also moved away with his family. And I was asked to join finance department. Uh, and you can imagine everything was new for me. So the country, the language, family situation. So everything basically changed for me. The country, the language, my family situation, and most of all, my role. Uh, I had to change from being line manager to being a specialist again from managing projects to managing finance, from working with my milestones and deliverables to working with math and closings. Um, and most of all, working with a very young, ambitious team of, peop of uh, women to an environment which was male dominated. Um, and it all largely put me out of the comfort zone. Yeah, that, that but must be out of comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But I didn't stand in my way. Um, I could give in, I could give up um, because there was a lots and lots of uncertainties and fear, of course. But yeah, I just picked it up. So let me do it. Let me do it all. Um, I think if you are in a conf out of the comfort zone, this is where there's a lot of fears. Things are unstable. You are not clear on your move and your pathway forward. But this is also a place where you grow the most. And this is also when I see I've grown the most as well. Um, and I learned about myself, about my strengths, about my weaknesses, how I can perform best, what are conditions for me to outperform, um, how I react in terms of unclarities, um, when I can speed up, when I can slow down. You just learn so much about yourself and you reinvent yourself all over and all over again. I think that's also applicable to those times we are now, is you have to reinvent yourself. You can't be constantly the same. And I think we will have to do it all over and all over again, several times during our lifetime. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Being out of comfort zone is... Uh, uh, it is uh, not so comfortable, but uh, it is for sure needed to get to the next level of our development. Uh, I absolutely agree with you here, Veta. So um, what else helped you to uh, getting to where you are now? Um, so you were going out of your comfort zone to the maximum. Uh, so what else helped you to get where you are now? Uh, what could you suggest to others or what, what others can benefit uh, from your experience? In terms of courage as well, and let's maybe stay in this uh, theme, um, it's important to claim your responsibility and don't wait for responsibility. I think it applies to different levels of your career, but especially when we talk about uh, young leaders, young managers, uh, nobody gives you responsibility just embedded and encrypted in the title of your job profile. You become a leader by doing it and acting and just don't wait for things to happen. I just make it happen. Uh, I'm also a mentor of um, young, talented women in our organization. We have a beautiful program called uh, Empower Her, <laughs> uh, where we, I have a small circle of about three uh, ladies, three, four. And then we meet and discuss also their challenges, what they can do, how they can act. We address different aspects, uh, especially at their age and the career level they are in. And there's a lot of ifs. 
sometimes like if only i could do this if only i could do that if only i could get this project if only i could speak up and we make it all conditional to decisions of others and i'm always like how about starting now like why do we have to wait until other gives us that blessing and that permission to do something um you know just think about that you can either do something that you love and that you are passionate about and that you would be proud of because it will build you up or others will just load you with things that they find important for themselves and for their own success and it will just only drain your energy out well now i remember when i was 31 it was here in the Netherlands. I wanted to get a promotion and I had a coach and he told me, if you want promotion, start acting as you have it. So if someone has to take that decision to promote someone for a role, the question is, will they promote somebody because of the potential qualities or because you've already delivered it? And you know, you can argue with this, but I think it works. It really works in practice. You, you take it, you own it, you deliver, you know, and the recognition only comes naturally. Um, you know, I always say that if somebody tells you that you can't do it, do it twice and take pictures. Claim your responsibility, own it. This is a nice quote. I really love it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this this could be my motto also. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. So, um, Vata, those are some great tips. So we need to be courageous. Uh, we need to get out of our comfort zones. And we need to claim our responsibility and just do it. Don't wait for someone else's permission. This is great. So uh, when, we, when we move to the next level of leadership, at some point uh, we... Uh, become leaders of leaders and uh, when we start dealing with such people who want to go out of a comfort zone who want to achieve more who want to do more uh, what are your uh, tips for uh, such uh, high level leaders how can they manage uh, such team of uh, people with uh, really big potential and and uh, big plans that's a great question you know, I always think about my role that I'm here to let others grow and shine and be proud of themselves. You know, and we don't hire people um, in our organizations to stay in those roles forever. And it's also in public sector, anywhere. We have limited time to work together and let's just make the best time out of this. Uh, so to me, leadership is not about power, as I said, but it's about empowerment. And it's a question, how to make it happen? What does that mean in practice? So first of all, it seems so simple, but get to know your team. Build that rapport, build that connection. Know who you're working with. Sometimes we are lucky to hire people and then we can choose who we are working with. Many times you are assigned as a leader of a team and you have to work with people who are already there. Get to know them, uh, get to know the human side of, uh, of your team members. It's not only about their hard skills, it's about what values they bring to the table, uh, what's important for them in which stage in their life and careers they are. Do they want to grow? They don't want to grow. Maybe they have to take a step back because they have to take care of their sick parents or maybe the kids, or maybe they are in that accelerated moment. Yes, let's, uh, yeah, let me grow because I want my career to shine. And we also learn a lot from getting to know the personalities. I think that's the beauty of getting to know who you work with and then the next step is encourage to have a strong performance, build the leverage, establish the rules and give them space and see what happens. 
let me start maybe with that leverage because it's so interesting. Actually, yesterday I was talking to one of my best friends. She happens to be a coach as well. And when I was, when we were discussing, she basically named it leverage. So leverage is that sharing that vision, that purpose, so that others can start owning it. They start to identify themselves with this. So if your vision is only yours, you will fail. You will be disappointed because you will not see that others actually follow. But leadership is about letting others understand, embrace, and identify themselves with your vision so that it becomes a joint vision. It's a joint purpose. And it counts for corporate strategies, program objectives, team roadmap. It can be so huge and it can be so small. So that people understand their why. And then you go to execution. So the, you establish rules. Um, rules are something which is key for effective team dynamics, especially if you want to have a trustful environment where we easily communicate and we give clarity to each other's roles. Um, I call it rules, but basically it's so simple agreements that set conditions for us to know when things are going right. How do I know that you, com you will deliver what you promised? How will I know that things are on track? How will I know that you need me? When can you escalate to me? What do you expect from me in from my role as a leader so that you can have your space? And what sh should I do yeah, to actually fit also our both styles of working? And we somehow meet in the middle. When we agree, it's like very open communication, but we so often lack this in our corporate lifestyle and in our behaviors. We normally talk about targets, objectives, what we have to do. But we very often forget about talking about how. And then you come to that discrepancies and those disputes on you know, I think I delivered great. And then you say, well, no, I see it in a different way. So just to eliminate this, I think those rules are so important. It's also like in a relationship, when you don't have the rules, how can you expect a sincere, I'm sorry, and a very honest, thank you. Like you really know the efforts that people put in the work. And then you know when they really commit and they step up, and you also understand, yeah, if they apologize, they also understand the consequences already. Um, I think that builds so much trust. It's so a great I, analogy with relationships. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and it is the case. I think establishing those expectations and conditions uh, for making things happen uh, is really key. And then you just let the employees run the show. And that's so important, especially for young managers and leaders, because there is letting go. There is always that moment of hesitation because there is failure attached to this. You know, we, we have to accept that fact that people can fail. And our role as a leader is to basically back them up, be there. Uh, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't let them fail. Yeah, I, I, this is basically what I believe in. And this is what I sometimes also do um, very consciously is that sometimes you have to let people fail, but make them go through small failures and help them make a big success. I think that's the greatest learning of all. Yeah, I learned it relatively early in my career when I was still in my late 20s. I became exactly... Um, that was my first role as a line manager. Um, we had a small team. I was a specialist and then actually I grew out of the peers and I became a leader of the team. And that was a challenge. I actually remembered my own hesitations. How am I going to be accepted as a leader? Will they actually look up to me or not? And I remember I arranged a small session where I collected my team, put them in a room and I brought a little form and that form just had a few questions, but they were very important questions. Questions like, what do you know about me? What do you 
want to know about me, what hopes you have with me being your manager, and what concerns you have when it comes to me being your manager, and how we can work together effectively. And I just left the team in the room for half an hour. I wasn't there. I couldn't actually tell who was saying what. And I came back, so it was a very open environment that they had to basically brainstorm about it and discuss. They make notes, and we were openly discussing the feedback. That was tough, I must say, because you make yourself vulnerable to feedback to, of others, especially in the beginning. But I think that was one of the best choices I could make to actually do it this way, because the feedback was very strong. But there was one thing that they had concerned about was Beata, we wanted to, we want to grow and we are concerned that you are going to micromanage us because we also want to have our own contribution, but you are an expert. And that actually gave me a lot of thoughts. I was like, okay, so I should step back. And I said, okay, then let's just have those conversations. How I can step back? so that you grow, but you involve me when you need me. And so then I think that that was one of the best, I think, experiences. And I have so great learnings out of this that stay with me till now, basically. But it helped a lot. This, this was very courageous of you, I must say, <laughs> <laughs> getting such type of feedback. And uh, um, uh, so those are some profound tips. Yeah. So let's uh, repeat them first getting to know your team yes getting to know them and uh, make them to get to know you better then uh, uh, we need to encourage them to uh, better performance and we do them we do that by uh, telling by discussing with them uh, the why and the how yes not only what we have to do but also why we have to do it and how i really love it yeah, and uh, I also liked uh, the uh, letting them fail. Yeah, I may even you know made made notes about this. But letting them fail is uh, the same strategy we use with children, right? <laughs> we know that something will go wrong, but we need to let them fail. And, and as you said, in some small uh, areas, maybe not uh, some so significant. Uh, but we need to allow people to make their own mistakes, yeah? not to micromanage everything. This is just yeah, absolutely. Amazing. And I think it's, you do it in a controlled manner in that way that you can, because you expect eh, that, uh, especially if people go out of their comfort zone, because you encourage them and you know they are not comfortable as well, and they can make mistakes. And I think if you if you actually accept this and say, well, yeah. If they fail in this situation, what's the worst that can happen? How I can intervene just in case, or do we have a backup plan? You know, and then they, they also learn. I think sometimes going through those challenges also builds people up because you go through this and you learn yourself. It's your own learning. Yes. Yes. And, and this is when it stays with you for longer. Right? You don't just, if you only take step by step by step and you only make success and you don't make mistakes yeah then when the mistake happens you know be careful because it, it can be a huge one and then it's very hard to recover from that as well i think that also teaches us resilience uh, of you know handling any kind of failures or mistakes yeah yeah absolutely so uh, we need to get uh, to know our team and what about getting to know yourself as a leader you know um, in one of the previous episodes uh, in the podcast ideas and leaders i was talking to lars sudman mm -hmm. and uh, he has a great ted talk which is called great leadership starts with self-leadership and we were discussing uh, discussing this topic so uh, what do you think about this should we also take some time on getting to know ourselves uh, not only our team i love this question because we only expect team members to grow and develop i think that's a wrong start uh you're absolutely right 
you know, some say that before becoming a leader, success is all about growing yourself. And after becoming a leader, success is all about um, growing others. But I don't necessarily agree with this because you just don't stop learning as a leader. You do it before because this is actually where the whole self-learning starts and you continue. You never stop investing in yourself because circumstances change. Such a dynamic world that we are in right now and we need to catch up. So I look at this from the distance. So we should look at our career as a marathon. You know, if you look at this, we have like 30, 40 years of work experience or being an entrepreneur or, or even longer. And it's not a spring, it's really a long way forward. So we should manage our way, spread the energy, but know also ourselves when we should speed up, when we can slow down. And don't push sometimes for uh, some things uh, to happen too fast uh, if you're not ready for that too much. I think it's really about self-awareness. Uh, Getting to know yourself is the best place to start with. To know your weaknesses, know your strengths, um, know when you should speed up, when what you do and how you behave when you fall down, and what actually keeps you recovered and helps you get up uh, on your feet again. Be aware of the risks and I think, you know, knowing yourself, growing yourself is so important. Unfortunately, we see so many people around that they just don't know themselves. They don't even spend time on getting to know who they are. Um, and there are some things that you can consider if you don't know more about, like enough about you, or you would like to do it more. There are certain things that you can start doing. First of all is asking for feedback. It's the simplest thing. I think we discussed it already. When I asked my team to give me their direct feedback, it was really a breakthrough. And just do it. I think leadership, it's about, it's a two-way street. We have to communicate. You can't only expect to give feedback to others. You have to take that feedback, open up. Because there can be certain good tips in this or areas that you have to consider. Um, the second thing is, if you don't know where to start, just get a coach. I think there's so many things, uh, so many uh, career coaches. I think I had about three uh, in my career. I'm also very lucky that one of my best friends is also a high potential coach. Um, I also had mentors. I think those people help you on your way. Uh, when you are at the crossroad, when you have to determine the next step, when you are facing a challenge, um, even in managing your team or the context of the situation in your work environment, um, it's always great to have, a, you know, kind of sparring partner to discuss um, in confidentiality that you can basically have also your privacy and your space to focus on yourself. Um, I think that's really great. And they helped me go through different uh, leadership assessments, personality assessments, tests as well. I could also learn about myself, but I'm also investing in this. I just don't leave it up to, you know, just those in individual interactions, but I'm also a huge fan of Tony Robbins. Um, I think he's so well known. Um, he's one of the most searched executives and business coach. Uh, he was coaching Serena Williams, Bill Clinton, Mark Benioff uh, before he started uh, Salesforce. So I attended two events of Tony Robbins uh, so far. And I think the, the, there is so much breakthrough moments you go through uh, that you really learn about yourself and your values and your contribution and your purpose and you just open up to this. I think it's just amazing. This is so great, Vata, that you're mentioning Tony Robbins because this week, in a couple of days, literally, I'm attending my first Tony Robbins event. Four oh, days of it. the power within. Yes. And yes. it's the virtual session. Yes, it is a virtual. It's amazing. 
and uh, yeah so i'm very happy that you mentioning that uh, you had a, a lot of breakthroughs so i'm hoping to have a lot of breakthroughs as well you will and i know the way they organize it them right now because it's virtual right now but you will get an amazing experience i'm sure about this and you will get lots and lots of inspiration i i'm, I'm 100% certain about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will share about this after the event. I will, I will share how it went. <laughs> oh, enjoy. Really enjoy. And just let yourself immerse in those events. I think it's just so beautiful. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think also maybe what helps is finding role models. Um, that also helps to becoming and getting to know yourself, getting to know uh other people and and setting role models for yourself because it's really the path that you want to follow seeing people who succeeded that they've made it i also want to make it and then let me learn from the best i think you know this is really never ending journey and i think we should just embrace this yeah for sure we need to have mentors coaches have role models and uh, constantly constantly develop ourselves uh, getting to know ourselves more i also had uh, on the podcast mm -hmm. uh, malvina falishevska and we were, were uh, we were talking about uh, uh, gallop talents mm -hmm. as he, she is a coach and after the after recording the episode i did the test myself and it is so amazing that you, when, when you do the new test and you discover completely new sides of yourself and you understand why you behave in a certain way mm -hmm. so i i I've, i'm also a huge fan of getting to know myself more and more that's um, great because i think the more you know about yourself the more you are aware of others and that definitely helps in managing teams be yeah. within your direct uh, spam of responsibility, but beyond, I think it's really about making an impact anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and um, but I have the last question for our today's uh, conversation. I know that you're engaged in building professional female networks, which I personally love as I am a TEDx Warsaw Women organizer myself. So I, I'm also engaged in, in uh, uh, similar activities. And I know that uh, you are the main driver behind the global celebration of uh, International Women's Day in Philips all around the world, which is amazing. So what are the key lessons from this experience? That's right. I just, I'm so passionate about female empowerment in principle. Um, I discovered this passion because it was really somewhere deep inside me. But the moment I realized, I said, oh, we, we really have to do something about this. I think the moment in the organization was just perfect because we set for ourselves also target for increasing number of women in senior leadership positions. Um, and I thought we really need to do something. So we had uh, that small idea with uh, two other ladies only to organize the International Women's Day. Uh, and in principle, it was supposed to be a small event initially um, here in, in Eindhoven, in our local uh, um, campus. But then we thought, you know, if it's 8th of March, 8th of March is a global celebration. Why don't we do something globally? And I remember I prepared a script and proposal um, and only through our internal network so that I knew like-minded, passionate women who helped me get my idea on the table of our chief, chief HR officer who came back and he said, it's perfect, let's do it. And... It was amazing. So we started to arrange our local main uh, event, but we also thought how we can engage others. It was really all about engagement. And we did it only through our internal network. We started to reach out to senior leaders, women also across the globe, HR business partners, people that we knew in different organizations. And we are really a huge, massive co corporate. And it was just amazing because the feedback that came, it was just, we were flabbergasted. We were just so stunned. 
because we had already the first year 42 locations that joined and six and a half thousand people celebrating international inclusion and diversity wow it was just mind-blowing for me and it was better than new year's eve i must say because we started uh, with events from australia so sydney was the first to actually share their photos and impressions and then we went through malaysia singapore china asia Europe, and then, you know, we had like 11 p.m. Uh, here. I was still getting pictures that our location in Bothell, they started their celebration at the west coast of U.S. It was so beautiful because we did something extraordinary. We raised beyond any differences, huh? cultures, languages, religions nothing mattered it's really about uniting as a company and uniting and celebrating diverse talents we need and we have in our organization and it was as huge as huge event in our innovation campus in bangalore that was 1200 people and we also got pictures from saudi arabia with seven women and they said well we celebrated in seven because we don't have more and it was just totally amazing. You know, I got chills when I looked the, at the feedback and I said, you know, this is why we do it. I think this is the beauty if net, in networking because the whole event was a totally bottom-up initiative driven by employees, not top-down. And everybody embraced it. We also had that rule that we want people to engage. We have a shared team, we have shared material but they can do and pick up topics that are necessary and very meaningful um, in this context of diversity and inclusion in their countries. Because you can't say it from a central perspective, how to do it in Japan, how to do it in US or you know, in Brazil. Everybody has different challenges. And that was just so beautiful. The great thing was that we didn't stop. We embraced it as an organization. And we already did it three times. Last time we reached more than 80 locations and more than 18,000 people. It was wow. just amazing. And we will definitely not stop. We will go for sure more virtual and then, you know, address even more people. Amazing. So I think that's really when I just talk about that, it's all about connecting with others. It's all about setting the network, being there, um, I also do it outside of the organization. Um, I'm a mentor in uh, women in tech uh, events as well. But I also have like an official network of uh, professional and business women. This is where we have also some regular meetings um, to get to know each other, inspire one another, you know, back, uh, have our backs uh, up as well. What happened, and that just to give you the example, is that the beauty of connecting people, um, you know, in, in our meetings, we, in one of the meetings, and it's all ladies. Huh? We had a lady that, is, uh, that has a renovation company, a lady that is investing in real estate, and an architect, and they all connected. Really amazing talent, young, very powerful women. You know, and when they connected, they had a project and they bought a house, renovated and sold, and they just did it with a close collaboration with each other. So you see that there are new parts that are opening up, you know, new business ideas. And, uh, you know, I just love to see this happening. You know, people and women that are stepping up and support one another. I think that's the most beautiful thing I could witness. That is amazing project. That is amazing project. So really huge congratulations on making it happen. Thank you. That sounds wow, fantastic. So uh, let's uh, summarize the main points from our conversation. So what do we need to, to do and to be, <laughs> to become great leaders in a multinational uh, corporation? So starting from the beginning, we need to be courageous, yes? Yes, so definitely be courageous. Um, allow yourself to make this first step and get yourself out of the comfort zone. Yeah. 
Um, claim responsibility. So don't wait for others to give it to you. Just own it and just don't be afraid. Just go for this. Um, and if you expect the same from your teams, then get to know your team, which is number one, and then build your leverage, establish the rules, give the space and see what happens. Let people grow. Most probably success will follow. That's the experience shows. And as a leader, get to know yourself as well. Build yourself, invest in yourself and never stop. Get a coach, get mentors, you know, people on the way who can cheer for you, but can also confront you with your weaknesses or with, you know, hard parts of your personality, because it's really about you, you as a human, you as a leader, uh, to make yourself successful, not only for today, but for tomorrow. And networking. I think that's the last uh, part is make yourself part of the networks, be visible. And I think the first step is actually to do it for yourself. Next part is build networks and connect other people. That's amazing. Thank you, Bata, for your tips. So um, if our listeners want to find you, where can they find you? In which uh, social media or websites? Definitely on LinkedIn, because this is my professional uh, profile. You can find me there. And you can also send me a message. We can always connect or get on a call. I think this is the best place to find me. Great. Thank you so much, Beata, for this conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. Did you enjoy this episode? Let me know that you listened by tagging me in your LinkedIn profile and using a hashtag Ideas and Leaders. See you in the next episode.